Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., all rights reserved. He's business's bad boy. You're bad, and I like it. Yep, he's one bad apple. That's right, that's right, we're bad. Uh huh, uh huh. That's right. He's Jim Blassingame, the small business advocate. Welcome back. 34 after the hour. Thank you for hanging out with me. I'm Jim Blassingame. I'm glad you're here. Having a going to about to have a very interesting visit with someone that you haven't met before uh, where he's uh, new to our show his name is Benjamin Way he's the president of New York Global Group which is a, which is a, an organization that uh, that helps companies do business in China it helps China companies and and uh, and and I guess the government and Amer- the American companies and other companies all over the world do business together help them to sort of talk to each other and get along a little bit better perhaps and he's here to talk to us about maybe to clear up some of the things that that Americans especially might be a little a little bit uh, uh, unsure about with with regard to China Benjamin Wei welcome to the show thank you good morning pleasure it's, to be here it's good to have you here Benjamin um, what let's talk about this this interesting relationship that uh, that the Chinese and the Americans have uh, and I'm just going to talk about America's. They, they have an interesting relationship, the Chinese, with a lot of folks. And uh, um, the the Chinese have a have a curse that I, I use a lot. Uh, Daniel, I mean Benjamin, that I know you know very well. You know, may you live in interesting times. Yep. Uh, China and America have an interesting relationship in that same way, don't they? Yes, they do. And. Talk to us a little bit about why. I mean, in, in, for for a long time, they were sort of part of the of the Cold War. Now that the Cold War is over, mm-hmm. it seems like China's that that America has more to fear from China's economic power than they do from their military power. What do you think? I completely agree with you, Jim. But I do believe the threat from China is overblown. It really is about economic development in China and how much that impacts all over the world. They hold lots of our foreign debt, and uh, it really became, becomes a, a great concern for many Americans just because the Chinese are getting wealthier. And certainly our wealth is being spread around all over the world. That does create some sort of concern. But I do not believe at all that is a, threatening our, our lifestyles here or, or militarily or, or one way or the other. Well, you know, I agree with you. Uh, clearly, uh, the middle class in China is growing. It's my understanding, Ben, that... that uh, um, that the that the middle class in Amer- in China is the size of the population of the United States, three hundred uh, three hundred million. That's exactly correct. And and uh, but but the the issue it seems to me, Benjamin, is is that while American companies could look to one point plus billion uh, um, Chinese who could become customers, mm-hmm. uh, getting to those customers in a way that 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 protects our intellectual property. That uh, you know that is, that is a way of doing business, the way we like to do business, which is you know with a rule of law. That seems to be a little bit troublesome with China. What do you think? Well, it has been a problem in the last three decades: intellectual property related problems, other trade barriers, and so forth. Not only just for American firms, but also for other firms wishing to enter the Chinese domestic market. That type of a barrier, however, has been. Less of a less because the Chinese consumers demand more products that are made overseas and of higher quality. And naturally, they do have a very big market in China. 1.4 billion people, 300 million people are in the middle class category. And growing. That's, tremendous. That's right. So there's tremendous buying power. And I think it's more about learning how to do business in China the Chinese way rather than worrying about whether one can or cannot go to China. The number one car maker in China is, in fact, General Motors. Mm-hmm. It's been there for so many years, highly successful. Well, the, the you, you said the China way, and that is what it seems that has to happen. 
In other words, Americans are used to people doing business the American way, aren't we? And, yeah, that's and, correct. And, and that's, where, that's where the rub is, isn't it? Because the Chinese, they have, they're pretty stubborn themselves, aren't they? They, they are. They are. And the Chinese has been around for 5,000 years or more. And there's a Chinese way, basically. It is a – nowadays in China, it is a respect of the law, respect of the regulations. It is a respect of the process that a, certain products are protected in China – Certain industries are prohibited from entering the Chinese markets. There's a bit of a national interest somewhere in certain industries, like nuclear industries and so forth. There are certain industries that are a bit of an off base for U.S. or foreign right. companies. But, Jim, the majority of industries and business in China are wide open. Well, hold on to that thought, Benjamin. We're going to take a quick break, folks. When we come back, I'm going to ask Benjamin Wei about ethics, the, the, the ethical differences between doing business in China in America, and about the rule of law. Is there really a rule of law that will protect your contract in China? And we're also going to talk about the currency, the yuan, uh, after these messages. 20 till, I'm Jim Blasingame. Stay with me. It seems so good to see you back again. How long has it been? Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., intended for the private use of our audience. Except as otherwise provided by copyright law, all other copying, redistribution, or publication without prior written consent is prohibited. All rights reserved. Prohibited. All rights reserved. Prohibited.